The Cospas Sarsat beacon is a radio-based transmitter. Technically, the way that it works is the user, which is actually going to be the victim that is in dire need of being saved, um, hits, hits the button. Uh, there is an antenna that is hooked to the beacon itself. The antenna is the mechanism to allow transmittance of the signal, which is, is a signal that is meant just for search and rescue. So the signal itself gets beamed into space uh, where we have hardware instruments orbiting around space waiting to actually pick up that signal. Each of the beacons is designed for the environment it's designed to work in. So EPIRBs are designed for use at sea, ELTs are designed for use on aircraft, and PLBs are for personal use by people in a range of different environments. The unique thing about EPIRBs is most EPIRBs are water activated. So the EPIRB would normally be mounted in a bracket on board a ship but when you take it out, you effectively arm it. And then as soon as you get it wet, it will start to automatically transmit. This is a fairly typical modern 406 megahertz ELT. Basically what you have is the, the ELT. Within the ELT is a G switch. So if you hit it um, like this, you apply a g-force or a gravity force of in excess of about 4g then the ELT will activate and that's set to a level whereby um, a hard landing in an aircraft shouldn't trigger it but a crash should. PLBs are designed for personal use by people in a range of environments. So whether you're um, backpacking, whether you're mountaineering, whether you might be um, boating, going out in a canoe or a kayak, um, on a snowmobile, skiing, any environment that you can think of where um, you might be going into a dangerous or a remote situation, then a PLB is useful for you as a person. And the difference is that really the PLB is something you carry with you. When the customer goes out, they never expect them to be in a distressed situation, whether it's maritime, land or sea, they don't expect that. But what they have, they have that comfort knowing that if, if, if their vessel gets into trouble or crew members are getting into trouble, um, they know that they have a device which they can activate and within a reasonable time frame, some sort of help will come to them, some asset will come to them and pick them up. When the beacons go off, we start the ball rolling that is distressed. We'll make phone calls to the person that the, the beacon has been registered to and then try to identify whether that person's actually in distress or not. Registration makes all the difference in us being able to quickly identify that there is actual distress out there. We find out that your loved one or whatever is out at sea will respond immediately. It'll be much quicker getting assets on scene. If we can't get an identification that they are in distress, we'll automatically assume distress and start responding with assets. Any distress beacon that's coded, whatever country you're from, the global system will work with those beacons. They've been type approved through a, a set of rigorous standards that the Cosmos RSET program has established. And anywhere in the world that a distress beacon's picked up, if someone from the Russian Federation is in the United States uh, and they're hiking in, in the Colorado Rockies and they go off, our uh, Air Force uh, RCCs will, will uh, execute a rescue and uh, save that person. And obviously, because it's a Russian Federation beacon, we would let the Russian Federation know, and vice versa. Before, when the people uh, from United Arab Emirates when they go fishing, they don't, don't have any idea about this uh, Kospar Sarsat program. Uh, and uh, when they had an uh, incident, they trying to use the cell phones and sometimes the uh, low battery or there are no signals. 
So they maybe some of them t uh, took uh, days to find them. But people now uh, feel uh, safe and secure and also protected. At the time they press activate the speaking, they know they are their people, they are watching them and they will come to help them.